Hey there, West Michigan meteorologist Michael Barron's here with you. It has been a eventful start to the weekend out there. Have a lot of snow that came through the region on Friday, but then the weather quieted down and warmed way up as we went into Saturday. So the question will be, what does Sunday have in store? We'll have that answer coming up in a minute. But first, I want to recap that snow that came through this weekend. Big, heavy, wet flakes fell across West Michigan on Friday evening into Friday night. This picture from Abbey and Grand Rapids. Those big flakes didn't last long here in the city, but where they did last a while, snow quickly piled up. Sarah took this picture down in Kalamazoo where they were closing in on eight inches of snowfall yesterday evening. Of course, a lot of that snow melted today as temperatures went well above freezing, where things were even more extreme was in the eastern part of the state. Tank Obsessed on Twitter sent us this video from Port Huron with thunder snow coming down. Part of their region saw snow totals well over 10 inches and quite heavy too. You need really heavy precip rates to create that thunder snow, but it is amazing if you ever do get to see it. Snowfall totals here in West Michigan ranged anywhere from just about an inch in Grand Valley to up about nine inches in Climax. Albion picked up eight inches of snow. Galesburg eight as well. Portage seven and a half and Battle Creek almost to seven inches. That snowfall really tapered off in a hurry though here at the station, only picking up 0.6 inches of snowfall on yesterday. Now, if you have any photos or snow reports, you can send them to us on social media, meteorologist Michael Barron's on Facebook and at Mike Barron's WX on Twitter and on Instagram. The temperatures today, like we said, were well above freezing. 41 in Kalamazoo, 47 in Grand Rapids, 45 in Muskegon. Should only be in the upper 30s this time of the year, so it was a nice treat. A uh, treat, though, that did not play nice with the forecast. Told you 41 soared to 47 as we made it through this afternoon. 13 weather ball is blinking bright because there's a little bit of rain in sight heading through the evening hours. And blinking green, though, because no change for a scene to those 40 degree temperatures as we head into your Sunday view of the 13 weather ball sponsored by Countryside Greenhouse of Allendale. We're looking at temperatures as of about 10 o'clock that were still in the 40s for most of the region, Lakeshore counties, especially rain coming down in several spots in West Michigan. That'll wrap up as we head through the overnight with drier weather returning as we head toward your Sunday winds out there around 5 to 15 miles per hour across West Michigan. Gustiest spot is Holland up to about 12 miles per hour. The next several hours show rain coming to an end with temperatures falling Tonight under clearing skies will be down in the low 30s by tomorrow morning and then up into the mid 40s once again with the sunshine coming back out by Sunday afternoon before clouds return on Sunday night. Scattered showers, possibly a little bit of mix to the north this evening. Again, temperatures falling to around 31. Sunday will bring partly cloudy skies and nice weather for the daytime that high again in the mid 40s, but the overnight will bring rain and snow that will last into the day on Monday, but temperatures will stay very mild, so don't expect expect really any impacts from any uh, wintry precipitation that falls heading through the start of the week. The radar out there as of 10 o'clock again showing that brown of scattered showers pushing on through. It's just a weak little clipper system that's making its way across West Michigan. It'll be gone before we know it, and then we're back to nice weather as we head through the day tomorrow. Hour by hour forecast here shows that a little bit of rain pushing out as we head into the AM hours of Sunday. With Sunday morning, the cloudiest clearing as we work our way toward the afternoon we will turn partly cloudy cloudy for a few hours with sunshine coming through before cloud cover builds back in for the evening. And then the overnight, of course, brings that rain snow mix back to West Michigan. Here we go into Monday morning with rain and snow scattered across the region. I think if any of the snow is going to stick, the best chance for it's going to really be up toward US 10, maybe Big Rapids, Macosta County, parts of Nuego County may see some slippery road conditions on Monday morning. But for the most part, we're going to deal with a lot of rain here across the southern portion of West Michigan. We may see a break at times on Monday, but then more showers roll through and another little burst of rain and snow mix as we head through Monday night and early Tuesday before things again quiet back down as we head toward Tuesday and through the midweek. But that's before another weather system could come our way, bringing rain and snow as we head toward next weekend. Looking at temperatures out there for your Sunday, 40s return to the lakeshore with partly cloudy skies during the day. We'll be in the low 40s for our northern zones as well. Temperatures expected to be right around 45 in Grand Rapids, a little cooler down to 42 in Kalamazoo. 13 on your side, 10 day outlook. <laughs> 
Temperatures stay in the 40s through Monday and then start to slowly work their way downhill as we head deeper into the week. That rain snow mix and windy conditions return Friday and Saturday, turning to all snow by Sunday. And don't forget, next Sunday will bring the beginning of daylight saving time, though temperatures will be feeling a little bit cooler than average as we head toward the end of the 10 day. Now that system that brought snowfall here to West Michigan is bringing severe weather or has brought severe weather elsewhere across the nation and is taking a deadly toll. Three people were killed by falling trees in Alabama and Mississippi. One woman died after a tree branch struck her vehicle and a man drowned in Arkansas after driving into floodwaters. Kentucky's governor says there were five weather related deaths in his state. Here's ABC News's Elwin Lopez with the latest on the winter storm now moving into the northeast. Several reported tornadoes touched down across the south over the past 24 hours. This one touching down in Salina, Texas. Another one in Shreveport, Louisiana, and one in Kirby, Arkansas, where at least 20 homes were badly damaged or destroyed. Further north, strong winds are ripping the roof off this church in Evansville, Indiana. And Kentucky was hit with thunderstorms and wind gusts of up to 75 miles per hour. Hundreds of thousands left without power. Uh, the biggest damage uh, appears to be trees and power lines um, and, and the poles on the power lines. When it comes to power, this is going to be a multi-day event. The storm now moving into the northeast. Parts of northern New York and New England could see 6 to 12 inches. This powerful system first made its impact out west, dumping massive amounts of snow in some areas. No one expects this much snow to be in Big Bear. We'll get this much snow, but it takes a whole season. Families in San Bernardino pleading for help after being stuck in their homes for more than a week. The main road to Crestland and Lake Arrowhead close to the public. My wife is up there alone and I'm just trying to figure out how to get to her as soon as possible. Crews now hard at work trying to clear roads. Residents who are still trapped, if you have food and water, please remain sheltered in place. And the snow out west isn't over yet. Up to five feet of snow is expected in the Sierras over the next five days. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, Atlanta. As you saw in that last story, portions of California are still inundated days after that winter storm slammed the West Coast. Some communities buried deep in the snow with people lining up for much needed supplies as food and medicine run out. ABC News' DeMarco Morgan is in San Bernardino with more details on the rescue efforts underway. This morning, families in San Bernardino County desperately pleading for help, trapped in their homes for more than a week. This desperate message written in the snow reading, help us, as the historic storm cuts off families from aid. A California National Guard joint task force going door to door in Lake Arrowhead. One man being forced to dig under the mountain of snow, covering his driveway and car. This is my car down here. So this is one example of what many of the, the families are dealing with up here in Crestline. So as you can see, uh, we've got about eight foot of snow uh, piled up here. One family telling ABC News that they only have a few days before they run out of propane, leaving them with no heat. I assume that we're going to be in some pretty dark times here. I, it's cold. It gets really cold at night. Authorities getting to work, plowing roads and ensuring that residents get the supplies they need. Residents who are still trapped, if you have food and water, please remain sheltered in place. Though it hasn't snowed in Big Bear for days, gas stations closed. Shelves at grocery stores bare. It feels like it's the end of the world or something. And Crestline, residents lighted up around the block at a market whose roof collapsed earlier in the week due to the heavy snow. Some residents haven't been able to reach their loved ones, with the main road to Crestline and Lake Arrowhead closed off to the general public. My wife is up there alone and it's just been stressful mentally. I haven't even been, like I said, I haven't been home, so I'm just trying to figure out how to get to her as soon as possible. Finally tonight, check this out. Snowmobilers have a close encounter with the moose. Jeremiah and his family went snowmobiling next to the Palisades Reservoir when this moose attacked his brother. 
the moose had come down between the group on their sleds shortly before this attack was caught on camera. The brothers thought the moose might continue to walk on by. Instead, the moose started to make a charge for one of the brothers before turning and chasing toward the other. He tried to stand tall and scare the moose away, but it was not fooled and could have taken him out if he had stayed on that snowmobile. What we should have done is when the moose got in trail, we should have he was going to charge it, the moose is going to charge us no matter what. So once it was false charge, we should have gotten our sleds turned around and then my brother should have given it more space and just given it space to do its thing. It just happened really fast. The moose and Jeremiah's brother were not hurt in any way and the snowmobile took a beating, but was shortly fixed afterwards. Now that you're up to date on the latest news and weather here in West Michigan and around the country, you can always find more at 13onyourside.com or by downloading the 13 on your side news and weather apps. For now, thanks for watching 13 plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Behrens. Have a great rest of your weekend.